Hi guys, how are we all doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to the long awaited empties video. So empties videos are videos that I do every single month um, or I did up until about August last year and then advent season took over and last year was the craziest advent season that I've had so far. So I ended up not having time to do my empties videos. So I have literally a huge box of empties from August, I think August was the last time I did it, so it would have been September, October, November, December, so four months worth of empties, sat in a box here, ready to film, um, but I thought I would do my January empties first, because these are fresh, and can get these out of the way, get them recycled, before we move on to the big box. So if you've not seen these videos before, these are, like I said, videos I do every single month, and basically I go through all the products which have become empty that month, and tell you what I thought of them, whether I liked them, whether I didn't like them, how they felt on my skin, how they worked with other products, whether I would rebuy them, and just give you a little review. Now, obviously I do receive a lot of beauty boxes. I did purchase a lot of advent calendars, so I do have a lot of products, and I do get through quite a lot because I don't like products to go to waste. I do have quite an extensive skincare routine. I like to use a lot of makeup and other kind of products, so I do get through a lot of products, and I don't like things to go to waste, so, if I open a product, unless it doesn't work for me, unless it doesn't work my, with my other products, if I just can't make it work for me, then I will stop using it. But other than that, even if I'm not hugely keen on it, I'll still use it until it's empty just because I don't like things to go to waste. And then when they become empty, I pop them all on this tray and then at the end of the month, I talk through all of them and let you know my thoughts. So some of these products will have taken a lot longer than a month to get through. Some of the tiny products, literally less than a month. So it is a mix of products. I haven't opened these and used all these in one month, um, but yeah. You will also recognize some of these from my Shop My Stash video, which I filmed at the start of the month, um, where I tell you what products I'm gonna focus on using for that month. So obviously some of those did become empty and they have made it to the empties pile here. So I'm gonna go through these products one at a time. I'm gonna start with masks, do some skincare and then any bits of makeup and then other bits as well. Okay, so as always, we're gonna start with masks. Now masks, I haven't used for the longest time um, because like I said in advent season I just didn't have time. I work a full time job, I was doing advent calendars every single night and editing, filming, everything. So I just didn't really have as much time for skincare and um, so I just didn't do any face masks basically. However, I've made up for that in January. We have got a lot of face masks here to get through. Face masks and eye masks I'll do together. Um, but look at all these. So many of them. So the first one is the vitamin E mask from the body shop. This was in the advent calendar for the body shop and I've never used any masks from the body shop before. So this was my first one, first impressions. Um, I'm gonna say it was okay. This isn't one I would rebuy. I found that the material of the actual mask was quite thick and not really, I wanna say like not malleable to my skin. Whereas like with other masks, some of them, they really, really sink into your skin. So you can press it in and it just really fits your face really nicely. I know with some of them, if they don't quite fit, you can like cut bits of the mask and push it into your skin. But with this one, it just, it wasn't really, it just felt a bit thick and a bit like, almost like cardboard versus paper, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's a biodegradable sheet mask, so that was great. But yeah, it just didn't feel super comfy on my skin and there wasn't as much serum as other masks. So I wouldn't really get that one again. Um, I also use this I'm Avocado from Tony Mole. It's upside down because that's how it opens. This was really nice. I've used this brand before. Um, I think we've had them in glossy boxes before. And this was a really nice sheet mask. Very hydrating, lots of serum, and felt really nice to leave it on my skin. We have a Garnier Moisture Bomb sheet mask, the super hydrating and replumping mask. I've had this one so many times before. Garnier masks are always really, really good. They're always very hydrating. Um, it says it's infused with a quantity of one bottle of serum, which seems quite excessive, and there is a lot of serum left in here. So if I didn't have lots of other serums and masks to get through, what I what, what I used to do, I used to, once I'd used the mask, pin the top over with like a hair clip or something, and then reuse the serum in my routine for the next few days. Um, but yeah, these are really, really nice. I love the Garnier ones. Um, they're quite affordable as well. You can get them in boots, um, and they did like gift sets at Christmas where you could get so many in a box and you save money. So definitely worth looking out for those ones, they're really good. Um, Olivana London Instant Hydro Glow Biocellulose Sheet Mask. Yeah, this one wasn't that great either. It was okay. The Instant Hydro Glow Marine Algae and Hyaluronic Acid Biocellulose Sheet Mask. Yeah, this one was okay. Nothing wow about this one. Um, I like the fact that it had marine algae in it. Kind of reminds me of like Elemis, um, which is fab ingredients for your skin. 
Um, yeah, it wasn't very wow. It was okay. Didn't really leave a dazzling impression. So yeah, I'd probably use that again, but I wouldn't purchase that one again. Uh, we have the Avant Centifolia Rose Radiance Capturing Mask. Now this one, when I was sorting through my masks, I noticed it was open. It had a little hole here. Um, so I used that basically that night, so straight away or as soon as I could, um, to use this up. Avant masks are really, really nice. I love all of the Avant products. Like, they're so nice on my skin. Um, although this is rose, like, I'm not a fan of rose. It doesn't, like, have a very strong scent of rose, which is good because I just really don't like rose-scented face products or any products, really. Um, but no, this was a really, really nice one. It felt fab on the skin. Very hydrating. And yeah, I'd, I'd definitely use that one again. Very expensive, so probably won't purchase, but I will definitely use it if we get it. Uh, next we have the Beauty Pro Retinol Anti-Aging Sheet Mask. Now this one is one of the biodegradable packaging, which is what I really, really like. Um, they launched this a year ago now, where not only the sheet masks are biodegradable, but also the packaging, which is the first brand to have done this. And Beauty Pro Sheet Masks are really nice anyway, I love them. Um, but the fact that they've done that as well is just fab. What I like about this retinol one is, when I think of like a retinol mask, I feel like it's going to be quite drying quite intense on my skin but this one isn't it's very nourishing but you know at the same time it's still working to reduce your fine lines and wrinkles and yeah this is a really nice nighttime one for me i do like this one then i use the banal bargi i'm not really sure how you pronounce this one the booster mask i love this one this one was so nice again full sheet mask very nourishing, lots of excess serum, like a lot of excess serum. But this one just felt really, really nice on my skin. Like I was so happy with this one. Yeah, I'm not really sure where this one came from. I can't remember, but I would definitely get this one again. Korean skincare as well, which is just incredible. Then we have one of the Foreo masks. This is the Acai Berry Mask uh, from Brazil. A smoothing, um, it's a tensile sheet mask. These are the ones which you can use with your UFO 2 device. Um, or you can just use it as a sheet mask. I use these big ones as just a sheet mask. I just like to put them on. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you have the UFO here or the UFO mini, you can pop the sheet mask on and also then use your device over the top of it just to help those ingredients penetrate your skin a little bit better. Um, yeah, these are all fab. I absolutely love them all. And then we have two sets of eye masks. So we have one from 111 Skin, the Cryo Deep Puffing Eye Mask. These are gorgeous. I love masks from One Woman Skin, they are amazing. Super expensive though, super expensive. Um, so these are like the Hydrogel masks, they're fairly thick. Um, it doesn't feel like they've got a lot of serum on them, but they feel very nourishing when they're on your skin. And yeah, they don't slide down your face as well. Because some masks, some eye masks as well, when you've got quite a lot of serum on them, they do tend to like migrate down your face. Um, and you're constantly pushing them up, but they're really, really nice. Um, and the second set I used were the MZ Skin Hydra Bright Gold Eye Mask. These are very similar to the One Woman Skin Masks in the way that they were like a hydrogel mask. Didn't move down my face. Uh, felt really, really nice. Yeah, fab brand as well. Love those ones. So yeah, overall, not bad for masks. Some I would repurchase, some I wouldn't, some I would use again. But I'm definitely back on my self-care face mask hype now. And my mask drawer will start to become a little bit empty, which is good. It's very full right now. Okay, moving on to... Ooh. Okay, moving on to skincare. I'm going to start with cleansers and do it kind of like in the order of a routine. So cleansers. Um, okay, so the first product is the Nivea Hydra Skin Effect Pure Hyaluronic Acid All-in-One Micellar Water. Um, I use micellar water quite often to remove swatches, to remove my eye makeup before I then double cleanse. And I have found that micellar waters are getting a little bit more expensive, aren't they? Like, last time I saw the Garnier one in Boots, it was like seven or eight pounds. I was like, last time I bought this, I'm sure it was four pounds. I don't know why there's such a price hike in micellar water. Um, this one was quite affordable, so I just picked this one up. And yeah, does a good job. It's absolutely fine. I'm using another one of the same product at the moment and it works it's fine my favorite one is the Garnier sensitive skin on the pink one um, and I do also really really like the Bioderma micellar water but that one is a little bit more expensive okay so as a first cleanse I was using the Aborian Centella cleansing oil which looks like this this one took quite a long time to actually become empty um, you don't need a lot of this product and it works so so nicely. It's quite a thin oil It's quite runny. So if you just do a pump in your hand, it is quite runny in your hand So you need to like be quite quick with it I don't need to put a pump in my hand rub my hands together and then rub it all over my face and um, it melts your makeup so well um, it smells really nice. Didn't really sting my eyes. Like I didn't actually go in to remove mascara with this because I was using my micellar water to remove that. Um, but where I used it around my eye area it didn't sting, which was great. And yeah, I really like this. 
Um, I love a boring product anyway, and I have a mini of that to use, so I will be moving on to that pretty soon. Then as a second cleanse, I was using this one from Mantle. This is the Magic Milk. Um, this is a really, really nice skincare brand. They originally sent me three of their products. It was the cleanser, the, the day cream and something else. The C oh, the CBD serum. Yeah, really, really nice products. I absolutely love them. Uh, this again took ages to get through. I was using this for quite a long time. Um, it's a bit of an unusual scent. So if you're not too keen on the scent, it's probably not a good one for you. I didn't mind it. Cause of course with cleansers, you know, you put them on, but then they're off pretty soon after anyway. But yeah, this did a great job at removing the rest of my makeup and anything else that was on my face. And it wasn't drying, it wasn't stripping at all. It just was really, really nice on the skin. So yes, I would 100% buy this one again. Um, this one is really nice. I do love all their products I've tried so far. The next cleanser I finished was the Drunk Elephant Bestie Number no. 9 Jelly Cleanser. This is just the mini, this is a 30 mil, very small one. Um, I was using this as a second cleanse when this one ran out. And this was the first time I tried this cleanser from Drunk Elephant. I do have one slightly bigger, but I thought I'll use the small one first to see if I actually like it. And then if I don't, I can pass the other one on. This was really nice. The consistency of this reminds me of the Medicate cleanser. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, it's a gel, but it's kind of like a little bit tacky as you're rubbing it together. Um, does a really good job on my skin and didn't make it feel stripped or dry either. Um, that's my only concern with like gel cleansers as a second cleanse. Sometimes they do strip my skin a little bit, but this one was absolutely fine. It did a great job at cleansing my skin. And yes, I will 100% be using the bigger version of this uh, when I need to move on to it. And then the last cleanser is this tiny little one from Cetaphil. So I had a couple of these in the cupboard and I just wanted to get them used. I've not used many Cetaphil products or like a lot of them. It tends to just be these little minis. And yeah, I just thought I would use this one. So this is the Gentle Skin Cleanser for Normal to Dry Sensitive Skin. Um, it was fine, absolutely fine. I can see why it's recommended by so many people. Yeah, just did the job. It didn't have a scent, it wasn't stripping. It just, it did a great job, yeah, it was absolutely fine. Obviously Cetaphil is not like the most exciting brand so I can see why more people tend to go for like more exciting brands like Drunk Elephant or can't think of any more examples right now. But yeah, this is a really good one. So if you're looking for an affordable, effective cleanser, definitely, definitely recommend that one. Okay, the next item is a toner. This is from Dermalogica and it's the Hyaluronic Ceramide Mist. Um, so this is like a facial mist that I was using as a toner. So the second step in my skincare routine. Um, this hydrates and strengthens the skin's barrier. Um, I started using this because obviously in winter, I need to look after my skin barrier a little bit more. And this obviously contains ceramides, which does work to keep that barrier intact. Um, I know that last year, around this time of year, I had quite a lot of dry skin on my face, um, especially like on my cheeks and like on my chin. And this year I haven't had that. So I think because of the products I've been choosing this winter, whilst it's been colder weather, I have been taking better care of my skin and it's been working. And yeah, this is one of the products that I would recommend. Um, this was really nice. So just to tell you a little bit more about it, it locks in moisture and helps it bounce back. It's a long-lasting hydrating hyaluronic acid and ceramide mist to help smooth fine lines and strengthen the skin's barrier. Now it does say avoid the eye area. So I started by applying this on a little cotton pad and then wiping it off my face. But all I did then, I decided that that was taking too long and I'm also using a lot of cotton pads. I just started spraying it on my face and shut my eyes and it was absolutely fine. Didn't sting or anything. But yeah, I really like that product and I would definitely use that one again. Okay, and we have one more toner. I think that's it. Um, which is the Lancome uh, rehydrating comforting toner. So this is one of the products I picked out for my shop my stash for January and I've used it all. Um, it's so hard to get that last little bit because as you tip it up it doesn't really come out. Um, so I could if I wanted to take the top off but I've got enough products to use and it's only a drop so it's fine. This is really really nice. This is so calming. Um, it is formulated for dry skin, even sensitive skin and I just used a cotton pad to apply this all over my face. Where it differs from other kind of toners is it doesn't soak into the cotton pads. It kind of sits on top of it so it just means that more product is actually getting to your skin rather than like the Dermalogical one. When you spray this onto a cotton pad obviously it soaks in a bit which is better for kind of moving it around your face. Uh, this sits on top so it does kind of dribble a little bit sometimes so you just have to be wary of that. Um, but this was a really, really nice toner. I've used this before and I would use it again. Okay, next we have a couple of eye serums and eye creams. This is the only serum I have this month, an eye serum. No face serums. That's because I've just been using a full-size Arborean serum. Um, so first up we have the Dermalogica Bioluminity Eye Serum. Now, if you've watched my channel for quite a while, you will know how much I love this product. This is the best eye serum I have ever used. 
um, for like a daytime serum. So nice. It's super lightweight on the skin. It soaks in so easily. It works fab with my moisturizer, whatever moisturizer I'm using. Um, it works great under makeup. It works, it's worked so well with all the other products I've tried. Um, and it's vitamin C, so it's brightening. Um, it is quite pricey. So if I was gonna purchase this, I'd look out for it in a set around kind of Christmas time or when they have any other offers on. Um, but this is 100% my favorite eye serum. It is just the best. I also really love their Biolumin C face serum. Uh, that is so, so gorgeous. I was hoping we'd find that in an advent calendar this year, but sadly we didn't. But that is the best. I absolutely adore that serum. It's the best vitamin C serum ever. So yeah, I will 100% be looking out for this one. I can't really justify buying it at the moment because I have so many other eye creams and eye serums to use. So hopefully I might find another favourite within those that I haven't tried yet. But hands down, this is my favourite so far. The next product for the eyes is the Dr. Barbara Sturm Super Anti-Aging Eye Cream. This is just a little, little pot that we got in a beauty box, I think. This is actually more like a cream and I was using this at night as a night cream. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell from the very, very small remnants left in the bottom there. Um, but it is definitely more of a cream than a serum, it is an eye cream. Um, I was using a little spatula to get this out and I just dotted the tiniest amount under each eye at night time. Um, again, this was really nice, it worked so well with all of my skincare that I was using. And I do feel like products like this, like the anti-aging eye creams, I do feel like they work. I've been using products like this for quite a long time now and I'm quite proud of my eye area. I don't think it has as many lines around it as it would do if I hadn't been using them. Yeah, this is incredibly expensive so I definitely won't be purchasing this but I would definitely buy a box if I had it in because it's really nice. Moving on to moisturisers. So the first one that I finished was this one from Dermalogica. This is the Stabilising Repair Cream. This took a long time to finish and it became empty in January. This is one of their newer creams. And again, it's got Ceramide Building Complex and Seeker. Uh, it's a barrier repairing moisturizer. So obviously this is why I was using it at this time of year. Um, I did use this as a day cream and then I just moved on to using it as a night cream. It is quite rich. Um, so sometimes at night, I do like to put like a little bit more of this on just to make sure my skin is being repaired and looked after but I do feel like this is one of the products that contributed to my skin not getting dry and being okay with the colder air again Dermalogica quite pricey but definitely quality skincare that does what it says on the tin um then day creams um the one I was currently using for the entirety of January is still not empty but at the same time I was using a couple of others um sometimes I like to have a couple of minis open at the same time just to try other things out and these were two that I used so the first one was the Esper Optimal Skin Pro Moisturiser. I believe this was in the Glossy Box calendar. I think it came with the serum from Esper. Um, I do have a full size of this in my drawer, but because I hadn't tried it before, I thought I would use the mini to see if I do like it. Now, one thing I will say about this is it does have the Esper scent, like the signature Esper scent. So if you don't like scented skincare, it's probably not for you. I've smelt this scent before in various other Esper products I've used. I've had a few cleansers. Um, I can't actually think of what other products I've used. But I feel like it's quite a lot. Um, but I just didn't expect this to be so scented. So when I first put it on, I was a bit shocked of how scented it was. Um, it was okay though, It does the scent does disappear. Um, but what I would say about this product is it's fab under makeup, fab with SPF, and it did a really good job at hydrating my skin, preparing it for makeup and creating a perfect base. Uh, it's just the scent that I'm not the hugest fan of. It's okay, I can put up with it, but yeah, that's the only downside to that one, I'd say. And the other moisturiser is the Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream SPF 30. And you will, of course, know that I absolutely adore this cream. This is the best moisturiser. Well, if my skin is struggling with anything, if I want to try some new makeup, if I want to try new SPF, if I want to try some new products, I can guarantee that this moisturiser is going to give me the perfect base for anything. This just works so well. It doesn't pill with anything. It's very hydrating, very lightweight, and I like the scent. It does have a scent. It's hard to describe, but yeah, I, I, I like the scent. It's fine. And if I could, I would literally use this non-stop all the time, forever, because it's the best. I really, really like um, the Elemis Marine Cream. I do have a couple of full sizes, which is a fab, um, but I am trying some other products at the moment, but they're like my backup. And that is it for skincare products. So moving on to makeup. I have four makeup products, three are from Charlotte Tilbury, and one is this tiny one from MAC, so I'll do the small one first. So this is literally just the smallest MAC Fix Plus setting spray. This is a tiny little mini 
can't even remember where this came from. Possibly last year's calendar, I'm not really sure. Um, I'd used half of it and then I found it in my drawer when I was doing the declutter, so I just thought oh, I'll just finish that off. Very small one. Um, I really like the MAC Setting Spray. I find it's one of the best. Um, sets my makeup all day, makes it look perfect, it doesn't smudge, doesn't let it transfer. It's just a really, really good, trusty setting spray. And yeah, I do have a full size of that and I will be using that because it's really, really good. Uh, the next product is also a setting spray. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Oh, I have a couple of these in my drawer at the moment. Uh, when I did my declutter, obviously there's quite a few, um, but like I said, I will use them and I do use them. Uh, this one's empty, I'm halfway through my next one already. Um, again, this one is a setting spray which I haven't used as much as MAC, but now I've tried this properly, this is really, really good. I probably couldn't decide between that and MAC right now, but this one, this is one I've been using in, well, the entirety of January, and I just feel like it sets my makeup so well, it creates such a perfect base. Um, and it doesn't smudge. So even like at the end of the day, if I put my makeup on first thing in the morning and I go to work, I'm in the car for several hours, I'm in the office, I'm walking around the centre, um, I then come home, I do tea and everything, we do a walk with Luna. Uh, when it comes to taking off my makeup at night, I'm shocked at how perfect my makeup still looks on my skin. Um, and I think that's because of this, and obviously the combination of makeup products underneath and prepping my skin. But this just keeps it looking really, really good. And yeah, very impressed with that one. Next we have the Brow Fix Clear Brow Gel from Charlotte Tilbury. Now this one, it's okay, it does the job, but not as good a job as others that I've used. I do find it's quite, I don't really know, I feel like a good brow gel really like locks them in place, whereas I feel like this just kind of brushes them in place, but then it doesn't feel like they're set. I have used this several times before and I will continue to use it if I receive it in a box or something, but if I was going to buy one, I'd probably just buy the Benefit, the 24 hour one, because I feel like that one just sets it so much better. Um, but it's it's okay. It's not bad, but it's not the best. Um, and then the final makeup product is the Full Fat Lashes Mascara from Charlotte Tilbury, which is this one. This is the first time I used this one, and it was okay. This is what the wand looks like. It's quite a thick wand. Um, I did find that this like transferred a little bit. So even when I'd set it, I did have a little bit of like transfer on the bottom and top so it was okay it's probably not one i'd pick up again it wasn't wow it was just okay um but let me know what you think of this one it says it curls separates volumizes lengthens and adds drama yeah just wasn't very wild by that okay moving on to your hair care okay i've used quite a few little shampoo and conditioner duos um i had so many from my declutter and yeah i've been working through them the first pair is the color wow duo so this is the Colour Security Shampoo and Conditioner. Um, I've used this one before, I absolutely love this one, and I've recently just received this in the limited edition glossy box as well. So very happy with that because this is, oh, it's just one of the best. It's so, so nice. The shampoo really, really cleanses your hair, and it feels super clean. It's really nice, I absolutely love it. And the conditioner is fab as well. Uh, really nice duo, we'll definitely repurchase these when I need shampoo again. Definitely recommend that one. I've mentioned this many times before, but the Colour Wow products are made with coloured hair in mind so that it keeps your colour looking really, really vibrant, really good. Um, and if you've got like blonde, it keeps it looking blonde, not like, not dull. And I just feel like it, it does, it does work. The next duo is from Daviness and it's the Momo Shampoo and Conditioner. Now, I apologise for how this looks because it's not looking very nice. Um, but this is the duo here. This was in an advent calendar and when I received this, the lid of this was half off. So the top of it had started to go a little bit, ugh. Like look at the colour. Can you see like where it's it's dried? It's gone a bit of a dark colour. It doesn't, it didn't look very nice at the top, but I thought, well, I'm gonna use it anyway and I use it fairly quickly. So this was the first duo that I used from the calendars just to get them used because I didn't want it to go off. Um, this was really nice. I do really like the Daviness product. Um, really nice scent i feel like it really cleansed my, my skin it really cleansed my hair very nicely and yeah nothing bad to say about this this was really nice the only thing is just the packaging it's just weird having to like scoop the conditioner out i much prefer it in a bottle i don't know why they didn't just put it in a bottle like this one yeah just it's very weird i don't know um but yeah thankfully i can get rid of that now but yeah very very nice products then we have another one of my faves um these are the we are paradox growth shampoo and conditioner um, the lid of this is, I don't know where, it disappeared, um, but this is what it looks like. So, two aluminium tubes. Um, it's the Thickening Shampoo and Thickening Conditioner for thicker, fuller hair. Now, when I'm choosing shampoos, I don't really choose ones that give me thicker hair. I just choose a shampoo that I like, one that's mainly looking after my blonde, 
mainly looking after the condition of my hair, keeping it in good condition. Because obviously when you've got blonde in it, you need to take extra good care. So I probably wouldn't choose this one if I was buying them. I'd choose the moisture range. But if I have them, I will definitely use them. And I really like them. I was about to say all the products that I've used from this brand that I've loved. There's one product I'm using at the moment, which I'm not super excited about. That's probably going to become empty. And I will talk about that in next month's empties. But as for the shampoos and conditioner duos, amazing. Love them. They clean your hair. They feel nice. Not stripping. And yeah, I really like these. Um, I do work with We Are Paradox. And they've given me a discount code, which is just Karen. And that gets you 26% off anything on the website. Uh, which is their biggest discount code that they have. So if you are considering purchasing any products from We Are Paradox, definitely use that discount code to get you some discount. And even though I work with them, I am open and honest about my opinions, which is why the product that I'm not very excited about, I'll talk about next month, which is from this brand anyway. Okay, the final hair product is one I thought I would love, and I didn't. Okay, so this is the Deeper Love Hair by Sam McKnight Intense Treatment Mask. This again was in a calendar. And I've said I want to do more hair masks. I wasn't doing any masks uh, on my face or my hair around Advent season, but now I'm taking better care of myself. Um, I'm looking after my hair and I'm doing more masks. So I use this mask and the thing that put me off this one is the smell. The smell is not for me at all. I really, really didn't like it. Nope, that's just not nice. Not for me. So I actually applied this before going to bed because sometimes I like to sleep in these kind of masks. That's what I do with hair masks and I find it really works. It makes my hair feel super soft in the morning when I'm washing it out in the shower. Um, you don't have to do that. It just says apply to wet hair, comb through, leave for five minutes and then rinse. But yeah, that's what I do with hair masks sometimes and I find that it just really helps the condition of my hair. So that's what I plan to do with this one. So I dampen my hair a little bit, pop this through and then I also put some like oil, I French plait it and put some oil on the ends and that's how I then go to bed. But this, I put it through and I immediately regretted it because the scent, oh my goodness, it just ugh, was not nice. Um, I did sleep in it and the next morning I woke up and I couldn't wait to change my pillowcase and jump in the shower. It just smelled awful. In terms of a mask, it was okay, nothing wow and I definitely won't be rebuying this one. So I'm hoping this scent isn't the same scent as the rest of the products because I do have quite a lot from this brand. Um, I've got a shampoo and conditioner to try it. I've got another type of mask. Um, I've got some like nourishing balm. So hopefully it's just this that has the scent because mm, no, that's not for me. Okay, on to like body and other miscellaneous bits. Um, the first thing is this teeny little deodorant from Melon and Goats. This is one of my favourite deodorants. It is a natural deodorant. And this is the one I've used since I discovered this in the Selfridges Advent Calendar three years ago now. I used that, I repurchased it. I absolutely loved it. And then I was running out and just before Christmas, I went to Selfridges and I purchased the super size one, like the really, really big one. And then this was in a little ASOS cracker, which was very cute. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Um, I've also been using the Wild Deodorant, which is really nice as well. They're on par with each other at the moment. So yeah, I've got both of those. And yeah, this is really nice. I really like it. The only thing I would say about this size though is when you get to, like, when it's pushed up as much as, as it will go, um, the plastic rim does kind of hurt a little bit. Like, it's a bit scratchy once you're trying to get the last bit out. Um, so you can't really get the last bit out unless you, like, scoop it out. Okay, we have an Elemis Frangipani Monite Body Cream. Again, if you've seen my videos before, you'll know that this is my favourite scent from Elemis. This is so nice. Honestly, I could literally bathe in this all night long. It is so nice. Mmm. It's just the best. I first discovered this years and years ago. I think I was, must have been about 18. And I got the oil. Um, the one that comes in the glass bottle and you have to heat it up to turn it into an oil. And that was just so gorgeous. I fell in love with that. And from then, yeah, this is my favourite scent. Um, this was a little duo. I do have the shower cream as well. But this is so nice. Honestly, the scent is oh, to die for. It's gorgeous. Um, in terms of a body cream, very nourishing. It does soak in well. It's not sticky. But the scent does linger, which is what I like. I can still smell it a long time after I've applied it. Then we have this one from Aqua de Palma. This is the body lotion. This I had as a duo with the bath and shower gel and then the body lotion. It's quite hard to get that last bit out. Um, it's not a very flexible bottle, so it was a case of doing this and then hoping that it comes out. Yeah, the scent is quite strong. Dan doesn't really like this scent. Yeah, it's okay in terms of like a shower gel, but as for a body lotion, I found it quite overpowering. Maybe it's just because it's not my favourite scent. Um, like if that was the Elemis one, 
I'd probably like it more. But yeah, it's a nice scent, but I don't think I want to smell it that much. Um, and this is one that does linger as well. In terms of body lotion, this is a lot more lightweight than this one because this is more of a cream. Um, so it's lightweight, it does soak in quickly and yeah, does a good job at moisturising my body. Um, so yeah, it's just the scent, just quite strong, that's all. Then we've got this Phyto Replenish Body Oil from Dermalogica. Now this is, so I started applying an oil because I thought well, it's nourishing my body a little bit better. Um, and I opened this one, this is Bergamot Orange Blossom and yeah, this is bergamot and orange blossom. And I thought, well, I'll just use this one. I, I was using the Rituals one before that. And I just thought I'll move on to this one. Now, the only thing is with this, it's a rollerball applicator. But this is like an oil for your body. But it's a rollerball. So to get this out, you literally have to roll a ball over your legs, your body. It just, it took a long time to apply. Um, obviously, you could go over the same area quite a lot. And then you've got some, you can just like rub it in then. But... Yeah, I also didn't like the fact that it's a roller bar because I don't think it's as hygienic as, you know, just like a pump dispenser or just a bottle that opens. So this kind of shocked me from Dermalogica because all their products have been amazing, but I just wasn't really a fan of this roller ball. It just seemed to take such a long time to actually apply this to my body. And then, yeah, it didn't last long either. It's quite a small one. 30 mil. Yeah. In terms of an oil, it was okay. Um, the scent was okay as well, but... Yeah, I think there's others I'd choose before that one, mainly because of the applicator. Then we have a product from Molten Brown. It's the Suede Oris Bath and Shower Gel. I love all of the Molten Brown Bath and Shower Gels. I seem to be bombarded with these a couple of years ago in Advent Candles. I had so many, so I could try every single scent, which was great. So I do have my favourites. This was an okay one. It's not my favourite one, but again, they're all nice to use. I like to use these in the bath as like a bubble bath but you can use it in the shower. Um, it's got water in because when it's at the end, I just put the whole thing in the bath and yeah, make sure I get every last drop out. But yeah, these are really nice. They bubble really nicely, cleanse your skin as well. And yeah, like them, they're nice. Now the last two are kind of miscellaneous items. We have the This Works Love Sleep Pillow Spray. So I like the Deep Sleep Pillow Spray. And then this was a little one that we got in a box of some sort, the Love Sleep Pillow Spray. So I thought, okay. Let's give this a go. Um, it says, reclaim the bedroom for sleep and intimacy with ylang ylang and patchouli. Um, unplug from the day and turn on to pleasure with Love Sleep Pillow Spray, a super blend of ylang ylang and patchouli to encourage intimacy and relaxation and encapsulated deep sleep fragrance for a restful night's sleep. 93% slept better than normal. So you shake it and spray directly onto your bed linen. So I use this entire little teeny bottle, um, sprayed it over the bed, and pillows, and it smelled just like deep sleep pill spray. I, c I couldn't really tell a difference. And then I fell asleep straight away. So clearly it works just like deep sleep pill spray. Not really sure what the love sleep bit is or the intimacy bit because I fell straight to sleep with this. But there we go. So yeah, it's probably just that I'm exhausted all the time. But um, yeah, I, I thought it would be a slightly different scent or I don't know, I thought there'd just be a little bit something more about it, something a bit spicier, you know, but yeah, didn't really see a difference. So, so yeah, stick with your deep sleep pillow spray and spray some perfume instead. And then the final product is a bit of a random one. This is my toothpaste. I include this in my empties every now and again, not every time because I probably bore you by saying the same thing about my same toothpaste, but this is my favorite toothpaste. I've used this for years now. Um, I discovered it, I think, I know I discovered it, in a birch box. This is how long ago I discovered this and how long I've been using it for. A birch box back in 2012, I wanna say? 20, no, 2013 probably. So 11 years ago, I discovered this in a birch box. It was a little mini and I liked it because it was sparkly. That was what drew me to the product originally. Um, I continue to use it and it's just my favorite. So this is the Regenerate Enamel Science Advanced Toothpaste. Now what this does, it contains some technology. I've explained this before, probably quite badly, um, but it contains this technology called NR5 and it regenerates the enamel mineral to reverse the early erosion process. So because I drink a lot of Pepsi Max, that's basically 90% of what's running through my veins, and because I have um, asthma, so I use inhalers, which obviously aren't good for your teeth either, I feel like this is just looking after them a little bit more um, and also cleaning them. And it's just a really nice toothpaste. It's not overly minty, it is sparkly, which is quite cute. And yeah, I just feel like I'm looking after my teeth a little bit better. Quite pricey, it's around about £11 for this. Um, so I buy it when it's on offer on Look Fantastic and I stock up, or if I get a voucher or something, or you know when you spend so much and you get £15 credit, I buy toothpaste. 
that's how exciting my life is. I buy toothpaste, um, but it's definitely worth it. And it lasts quite a while and I have a stock of these. Uh, they last a while as well in terms of before you open them. Like I've just opened the new one now and it, it's fine until 2025. Quite a lot of usage in there, which is good. And that is my empties for January 2024. So thank you so much for watching. I'm really sorry this has taken so long to get back on track with these, but this will be every single month now. And then when Advent season comes from August this year, or maybe even July if it gets earlier every year, crazy, I'll make sure I'm on top of these. Anyway, they will continue this year. Hold me to that. They're gonna be every month this year. So quite a good mix of products this month. Um, a few full sizes, quite a few minis. I feel like I've made quite a dint in my skincare and makeup stash and I'm gonna be back on track with using a lot more stuff from now on as well, which is really good. I want stuff cleared. I wanna try more products, review more products. And I'm also gonna be doing a kind of mini review of all these on my website as well. So I will be posting a full post with pictures of stuff. So if you want a little bit more info about them, you can follow the links through there. I will also try and link all these products in the description down below. It does take me a little while to find them all. So when the video goes live, I still might be updating the description, um, but yeah. Let me know what you think of these products. Let me know if you've tried any of these and if you've got any different thoughts on any of the products. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate every one of you clicking on this video. Please don't forget to also click the thumbs up button, leave me a comment down below, hit subscribe, and I'll see you soon for another video. Do you say anything?